Welcome back. So let's reinforce some of these um, concepts of advanced probability, or mainly our law of total probability and uh, Bayes' theorem. All right, and let's do a couple examples with that. Okay, so so say we have information here about a, a manufacturing process for some sort of um, some sort of computer chip or something like that. So we're saying that they could go through a manufacturing process and get contaminated with something. Okay, so we're really only worried about do they have do they have high contamination or not? Okay, because when we have high contamination, we see that after going through a quality review, the probability that they fail that review is pretty high if they have a high level of contamination. So given, so again, let's read this over here. We've tried to sort of color code it. Given high level of contamination, the probability of failure is about 10%. But otherwise, probability of failure in this, um, in this process is very low. All right. We also know the probability high contamination. So 20% of things are, are going to be highly contaminated. 80% are not. All right. We want to use our law of total probability here to find the probability of failure. All right. So we know. So again, we're interested in the probability of failure. We know the probability of high or not high contamination. All right. We also know the probability of failure given level of contamination. So putting those together, the probability of failure is going to be will fail and high contamination plus fail and not high contamination. All right, we know from this table above, probability of high contamination, 20%, 10% of those fail. So multiplying those together, 2% of these, these chips are going to be fail and have high levels of contamination. The second line, so this is, these went together from the kind of the first line of that table. This is going to come from the second line of that table. All right, so I, I find that 80% are not highly contaminated. Only a half a percent of those that are not highly contaminated um, don't pass inspection there. All right, so that's a very low probability that they, they fail and don't have a high level of contamination. So less than half a percent. All right, so putting those together, my total probability of failure, again, these are the ones that fail and have a high level of contamination. That was 2% of them. These are the ones where they fail, but they don't have a high level of contamination. That's less than half a percent. Put those together, about 2.5% overall are going to fail their um, fail their inspection. All right, so that's the law of total probability at work. Let's check out Bayes' theorem. All right, we'll use this same um, kind of distribution here, these same ideas. So we know the pro overall probability of failure. But let's say you, you had a chip and you knew it failed, and you want to know, okay, what's the probability that this chip had a high level of contamination? Now, so keep in mind, what we're looking for here is the probability... Right? We know that it failed, so given failed, what's the probability it was highly contaminated? All right, remember, these are not equivalent. Right? Remember that, um, that line, that given operator, conditional probabilities, those are not commutative. Okay? So high given failure is much different than failure given high. We know 10% of the time if it has high contamination it's going to fail, right? But we we're saying okay, I've got a chip that failed, what's the probability it's given it has high contamination. Now remember, from our previous example, we already know the overall probability of failure. So high given failure according to Bayes' theorem, well I know in the denominator it's going to be probability of failure, right? We already know this. All right, we, we got that in the last example. My numerator, I'm going to flip failure given high times high. 
All right. So pop that in, use all the numbers from the table. And if we had, so that's saying if you had a chip that failed, the probability it was highly contaminated is about 80%. All right, so let's now extend this idea to multiple events in an example here of what we might call a Bayesian network. Okay, so let's get away from semiconductors for a second. Um, let's talk about, say, printers. Like, imagine yourself in a customer service department for a printer company or something. So a few things you know that it, it's typically going to fail for three different reasons. Either it's a hardware problem, a software problem, or some other problem, user error, whatever that might be. All right, so you know the probability. You know about 10% of your printers typically have had hardware issues. About 60% have software issues. Maybe 30% have um, some sort of other issues. All right, but, and you also know that some of these types of errors are more or less likely to actually cause failure. So we're seeing that you know, if we have a hardware issue, 90% of the time this thing's going to break down. Okay, so hardware problems, even though they're the least likely type of problem, right, they're the most likely to result in failure. We see software problems aren't necessarily going to result in, in a, a breakdown, right, but software problems are our most likely problem. Right? And half the time, if you have an other issue, it's going to break down, and they're, they're fairly likely. Okay, so somebody, so imagine somebody calls in, they say, hey, my printer's not working, but I don't know what's wrong. All right, you want to direct their effort to the correct department, right? If they don't know what's wrong, we got to see, okay, well, what's, what's the highest probability here? So given failures, so notice all these are given failures. So somebody calls in and says, hey, my printer's not working. I don't know why, right? You want to be able to send them to hardware, software, or other. Which one's most likely? All right, so this is an example of what, what we might call like a Bayesian network. First of all, we need our overall probability of failure. So using our law of total probability, again, trying to keep things color-coded here, all right, our total probability of failure is about 0.36. Remember, all of these came from that table on the previous slide. All right, so that'll be the denominator for each one of these probabilities. Remember the the probability of failure will be in the denominator for each one of those. So let's start with hardware. So we know something failed. Let's find the probability that it was a hardware issue. So hardware given failure. All right. Note my 0.36 in the denominator. My numerator right, is that hardware piece. Okay. So my numerator is the hardware piece. So 25% of the time if something fails, it's a hardware issue. All right. Next one, notice 0.36 still in the denominator, but my numerator is the software piece. So a third of the time, if something fails, it's a software issue. All right. Again, 0.36 in my denominator. My numerator now is the other piece. All right. And that is very high. Okay. So we're seeing that the most likely issue is some sort of other issue. All right, so if I if somebody called in and they said, hey, my printer's not working, what do I do? I would just direct them to the, if you have the other department. It's probably not a hardware issue, probably not a software issue. It's something else. All right, user didn't set it up correctly, whatever that might be. All right, so I hope these examples were helpful here. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.